Will the coronavirus break the internet? Officials warn HD streaming could crash the web. YouTube and Netflix cut streaming quality. Alarmist headlines like these imply the internet could collapse due to overuse during the coronavirus pandemic. Does that scare you? Can the internet really crash or be crashed? Let's find out. One, two, three, four. Millions of people around the world are staying home, working, playing, socializing, streaming videos on the internet. The increased usage is sparking fears of a collapse. Just try to imagine one day without internet. No messaging and emails, no Instagram, TikTok, Facebook or Twitter. No Google. You couldn't watch our videos on YouTube, but it wouldn't stop there. The economic impact would be disastrous. No online shopping, no online transactions. The stock market would likely be closed. No bank to bank transactions, meaning no wages into your account. Institutions and services would break down, leading to a global panic. But let's calm down. It's almost impossible to imagine a set of circumstances that could cause the internet to collapse. However, streaming services like Netflix and YouTube are reducing their picture quality for a reason. So how badly can coronavirus isolation affect your internet connection? How does the internet work? And is it possible for someone to shut down the internet intentionally? Let's find out. Figures from January 2020 show there are more than 4.5 billion internet users. And no matter what the activity is, surfing, emailing, doing online classes, playing games, they all need bandwidth. It's a crucial resource. And if there's one thing that hogs bandwidth more than any other, it's streaming. 70% of all bandwidth is taken up by video streaming during peak hours in Europe and North America. And because of the coronavirus and people staying at home, most streaming platforms have seen a significant user increase. That's why services like Netflix or YouTube have cut down their video quality. Okay, but how is the internet affected now that so many people are forced to work from home due to the pandemic? Well, the additional email traffic and collaboration tools use a relatively little bandwidth. And even video calls usually don't need high-speed internet. So as long as you don't spend your time working from home, binge watching our tech explainers, you should be just fine. Still, there are potential choke points, the IXPs or internet exchange points, for example. Those are actual physical locations through which internet service providers communicate. Here, huge amounts of traffic come together, but there are contingency plans in place to deal with extra daytime demand. The crucial part when it comes to your connection is the so-called last mile, the way the internet is connected to your home. Depending on the type of cable used, you might experience a slow connection during periods of truly heavy usage. On top of that, home networks such as the Wi-Fi routers can be unreliable. Many consumers have broadband plans with much lower capacity than in the workplace. When many people use a single Wi-Fi network, that can cause congestion and reduce speed. But could a bunch of mean hackers crash the internet? To know the answer, you'll need some knowledge to show off. You might think of the internet as this intangible cloud-like thing, but we call it web for a reason. The backbone of the internet is a web of wires buried deep in the ground. They might be fiber optics or copper. Some of those wires are just a beam of infrared light used to transport data to satellites or through cell phone networks. But mainly the foundations are wires. These wires are very useful because computers can connect to them and communicate through them. And since it's not only one connection, but many, you could call them a network or even an inner network. In other words, the internet is a global network connecting millions of computers. Through the internet, computer networks around the world can communicate with one another. Say you want to watch a video on YouTube. You type in the URL, the unique address of a web page. A typical URL contains information like the protocol to be used, the domain name or IP address. So my request travels through the wires to YouTube server and YouTube sends back the information required. And in doing so takes up bandwidth. 
bandwidth means the maximum amount of data that can be transferred through any internet connection over a marked period of time. That is a very simple explanation of what happens when we use the internet. What if someone intentionally tried to shut down the entire internet? Would that be possible? Not really. Even if someone snipped some of the undersea cables, it's a complex network and information can travel on many different paths. The overall connection is pretty safe. Actually, one of the estimated 428 undersea cables worldwide is damaged every couple of days, mostly caused by underwater earthquakes or anchors. So fears of criminals bringing the World Wide Web to a standstill are overblown. For that, somebody would have to know how the entire underwater systems are structured and stage an attack in the right way. So you might have problems with your individual Wi-Fi network or your favorite stream won't run as smoothly as usual. But streaming providers are taking care of that by cutting down the quality. And the internet in general, no worries, that will still be there after this global crisis. So have you noticed any changes to your internet connection recently? Let us know and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.